Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Mine is over in Psalms chapter 45 and verse number 7. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, thy God, therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Wow. There is a joy in a real believer's heart that supersedes the trouble. That's, isn't that a wonderful way? So precious. Okay. You're not going to believe this, but we're changing books. We're going to the book of Ruth. Tell me what you think about the book of Ruth. Give me some insight just off the top of your head. It, it, it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong, but just kind of what you think about it, where we can go from there and look at the, the in-depth of it. Okay. Isn't that a powerful statement? Wow. Amen. Yes. Okay, that's good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, she went to the she went to the limit. Any anybody else about the Book of Ruth? Yes, ma'am. It was in the period of the judges. And what caused the, the early wreck? What do you think about? Why, why did it, what, what was the downfall in the, in the beginning, in the early? It was what? Famine. Okay, famine. Famine, th that's why they left. That, that's true. Any, any? Loss of family. Okay, loss of, okay, famine, loss of family. family. Three family members passed. That's, that's good. Okay. Yes. Very. Your root system. Yes. Yes. Okay. Very. Very good, and all of it right on. As I was studying, I've been looking at it for several weeks, just kind of getting a picture in my mind. Um, the, the, there's lots of truth. You know, all, all the scriptures are, have truth, great truths to them. And uh, I, I thought it was neat they, that uh, early on they, they said, that, you know, why, why is the book of Ruth even there? Uh, I mean, a little book. It's so small, you know, three or four chapters long. And, but it's the transition. The, the theologians say that it's the transition from the judges to the kings, especially King David, because it goes into his uh, lineage at the, at the close of that. And I, I thought that was, that was very true. And then in the spiritual sense, it's a, trans, it's a transition from lostness to Christ and the hope that there is for anybody that has, I mean, I mean look, if, if you know anything about the Israelites and that Moab is one of their chief enemies and, and this little Moabitish woman, she didn't care. She fell in love with God and, and your God is my God. That's, that right there is what, is what turned the corner because she, she just totally devoted, if you die, that's where I'm gonna die. They, where they bury you, that's where I'll be buried. And so that, that is showing the kind of devotion and the must change that we, that we have to have to, uh, to make things right and to keep it clear. You know, there, there's got to be, if you live for God, you've got to be committed. It, it's not a, a in one day and out the next. The, the hope of Christianity is that as you get in and you stay in, you stay in until Jesus comes. He saves you not to, not to fail, but he saves you to to do more than survive. He said he wants to make us overcomers. And man, it, it is such a wonderful transition watching people come into, into life and walk away from that. So that's, that will kind of get a, a, a view, a broad view of it. And I thank you for your uh, talking about it.
I need to find my glasses here. Y'all don't see them, do you? Yep. Here they are, way up here. I don't know why they put steps in the church, do y'all? And I need one of them saddles with an elevator on it. <laughs> Where you just step on right here and it just goes, ooh, but... <laughs> Oh my, I guess I'm the only one that's got the creeks. <laughs> I know one more. Got Chris is right behind me. <laughs> what is it, baby? Yeah, bring on the oil. <laughs> uh, thank God we got this far. That's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Okay. Um, one, of, one of the things I'd like to do after we read, we're going to read the first five verses of the book of Ruth, and that, that's kind of going to be our, les our lesson for tonight. Now, it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and like uh, someone said that that was the trouble, the start of the trouble, and it seems like that it, when we get acquainted with Ruth, that's kind of what starts it off. A famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judea, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons was Malon and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judea. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Ophrah and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwell there about 10 years. To say the least, 10 years is a pretty big segment of your life to be away from where you're supposed to be. They, I, I don't know, does anybody know what the name Bethlehem means? Yeah. Why would you leave the house of bread? And, and the, the thing about the Israelites the bread was more than food. It was symbolic of this, this is where the blessing of the Lord rests. I mean, that just Bethlehem was just outside of Judea. And we, we can thin down a little bit to stay right with God. It's kind of basically what, I mean, the, the famine, there was a lot of famine. But I mean, just, just to leave out is a, is a, is a tough deal. Okay, uh, so to leave the house of bread, woo, take off. And Malon and Chilion died also, both of them, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. So in these first five verses, it looks like the ship just uh, headed out of the air and just plunging toward the ground. You know, there's no, no way to pull it up. And if you listen at Naomi's story later on, I went out full and I came back empty. And there's almost that, man, that's a harsh way. And as we look at the scriptures, uh, I think it shows the backslidden nature. And we, we'll, read, uh, we'll read some of this. I'm going to get uh, Brother Chris to help me if he don't mind. Would you read, uh, we'll, we'll put it on the screen. Uh, we're going to read Judges chapter 2. If you'll read, if you'll read Judges chapter 2, I'll read Judges 3, 1 through 6. And just get an idea while he's reading to us, get an idea of what's going on because like, like, like you said, Sister Jean, this was during the time of the judges. This was not when there was a king, but just the judges. And so what, what they did, uh, what the judges did was what they wanted to. <laughs> and so it was a rough, it was a rough time. Okay. Uh, kick us off there in Judges chapter 2 and start in verse number 1. I think there's like 23 verses. Thank you. 
turns quickly out of the way which their father brought them, and obeying the commandment of the Lord that they did not serve. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge, and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies, all the days of the judge. For it was in the Lord that they of their drums by leaving the camp that oppressed them and stretched them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead, that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers, and following other gods to serve them, and to bow down under them. They ceased not from their own doing, nor from their stubborn heart. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, Because that this people have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my word, I also will not enforce, henceforth, drive out any from before them of the nation which Joshua left in the back, that through them I may prove Israel whether they keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did, which they did so not. Therefore, the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily. Yeah. And so at the end of this chapter, you get a kind of a, a thumbnail sketch of what's going on. The people are backslid as a whole. They're, they have ups and downs, but I mean, they're, they're really not serving the Lord during the time of the judges. They're, there's nobody regularly to call order. And so this, it's just like not going to church. After a while, you go to, you go to sliding backwards. And if, if, as we go to chapter 3, uh, we'll read, we're looking at about uh, six verses. Now, these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war at the least such as before knew nothing thereof. Namely, five lords of the Philistines, and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Havites that dwelt in, in the Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon unto the entering in of Hamath. And they were to prove Israel by them to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Pezzarites, Havites, and Jebusites. And they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to be their sons and served their gods. Now, you, you can see that this, this verse number six is a really telltale sign. When, I mean, if you go to, go, go to Deuteronomy, this is not part of our lesson, but go to Deuteronomy chapter seven. We'll look at about four or five verses here. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land where thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Pesorites, the Havites, the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor shew mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make uh oh, look at look at the deal. Neither shall thou make what? Marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Now, it, it don't matter how many commandments you break, if you break one, you've stepped out. He said, Inasmuch as you've broken one law, you have you've broken them all. And and so to take his family to Moab and, and to get more Moabitish women, you know, there was some good that came out of that, but still it was a sin that the Lord said, don't do it because it don't always come out like Ruth and Naomi did. And he said, because they usually take the, their sons the other way. And look at the next verse, I think maybe. For they will turn away thy son from following me that they may serve other gods, so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. So it's not an accident that there was a famine in the house of bread. The problem was that they had leaked off away from the Lord. 
they, they had slid back away from God. And so the famine was there for a reason to try to bring them back to the Lord. You know, the folks that stayed there didn't die. They were just looking for an easy street. And man, our, our world has spent bukus on making life easy. And it's not always good that everything is at, the, at your fingertips. It's better, it's better if, you, if you have to labor some, yeah. And I, I told a boy the other day, I, I was trying to help him, and he was, he was like he thought I was Santa Claus, I guess, or the church was. And I said, well, the Bible says that a man should make his living by the sweat of his brow. And Paul said, no working, no eating. <laughs> he said, wow. He said, yeah. You get hungry, you go to work. I mean, if he's crippled or something, good, that's different. But when you're up running and, and no, nah, I, don't, I don't feel sorry for you. If you if you won't put, uh, now there's there's got to be some give somewhere. <laughs> Let it come in there. That's right. Okay, yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. Uh, for, for the particular guy's sake, I want to say this, that he, he has been looking for a job and put in several applications. I said, now, that, I can go with that. That's, that if you're trying, that, that's got to be. But just to sit back and say, this God did not want us to live like that in that that kind of lifestyle uh, it messes up humans we you know if you go to a horse sale this is what they'll ask you about that horse can he stand prosperity <laughs> you put him up in the pen <laughs> that's exactly that's a if you answer that question say no <laughs> Don't stand him up and feed him two bells of alfalfa a day and five gallons of oats and expect him not to buck you off because he's going to get that job done. <laughs> so the same way, us, if, if we don't work for it, guess what? We don't give a rip. I, I've seen kids go through their, their, I mean, especially from the jail, you know, I've been in the claim with so many of those. If they ever get anything, they just, it's just nuts. I mean, they just go crazy. A, a little guy that's been working for, I don't know, probably $10 an hour and didn't even have enough gas to get to work. He finally got a little settlement on a wreck. And when I saw him at the pizza hut, when we went to uh, a pizza inn, when we went to uh, Cotton's birthday deal, uh, he pulled up outside and was getting him some pizza. And guess what he was driving? A car vet. <laughs> And his house is tore up. I mean, he got all kinds of trouble. <laughs> said, don't throw your money away. It won't be three days. You'll be crawling around. You, won't, you can't even fix the flat on the thing, let alone. I mean, you can't. No. 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 But that's just the, the mind, the human mind. If you don't put God in the mind, it's, it's a mess. You, you go to thinking about stuff that has no, no value. I mean, it's not long. You don't feed your family. And I, oh, and so th this man, this man should have been the leader and said, honey, we're not going to Moab. That, there is no way the blessing of the Lord is going to follow us in Moab. And, and you can look at, at what Judges said here. And look back to chapter 2, verse 10, maybe 10, 11, 12, where, where uh, Chris just read. And also all the generations were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, and look at this word, which knew not the Lord. You know what our world knows today? They know what denomination they are, but they don't know God. That's the breakdown. If you know the Lord, you pray it through and stay in the house of bread. You ain't going to drag me out of there. No, this is the bread of life. This is it. 
If you miss that, you miss everything about what life is about. Because you can have stuff, but stuff does not fulfill it. Don't, fu don't fulfill the deal. And so, man, they, they, they went, but they went in trouble. It, it cost them so much. Uh, there's another passage I was thinking about. And this, this scares me, but knowing uh, how the Lord dealt with the, the problem at the time, I think this is going to be like in uh, Numbers. Numbers, uh, mm, uh, I believe it's like, like Numbers 25. And Israel, and Israel abode in Chittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of who? Moab. Of Moab. And the Lord told them from the beginning, don't cross the line. Did you know the Bible still teaches don't marry an unbeliever? Yes. If you're a believer, you're living for God. Don't marry an unbeliever and expect it to work good. It's going to be trouble. Now, if you're out in the world, I mean, that it's all kinds of stuff happens. Not that God can't clean stuff up. But if you're living for God and you go to a bar room to find you a maid, you... What's wrong with your head? Is there something broke here? So the Lord is trying to trying to keep us, you know, from from going going down the drain. <clears throat> Commit home with the doors of Moab. This was during Moses' time, but just to show you how the Lord dealt with it, going down, we we'll look down about five verses. And they called the people into the sacrifices of their gods. Do you see what's happening? Moab, Moab called the men of Israel that's fooling with their Moabitish women and said, let's, let's go, we'll have our God over here, our own God. And the people did eat and bow down to their gods. What is the first commandment? Thou shalt have no other gods before thee. And what's the second one? Thou shalt not bow down to any graven image. And look what they're doing. And, and yeah, they're bowed down to their gods. And this was Moab. Look at verse number three. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And so whenever Elkaniah led his family out of the house of bread in, into an infested world of Baal Peor, you think God's going to put a check mark on that? Mm -mm. It ain't going to happen. The Lord's anger was kindled against Israel. <clears throat> And the Lord said unto Moses, take all the, are you still here? He's not talking about leaders. He's talking about cutting people's heads off. Are you still there? You think the Lord, yeah. And the Lord said unto Moses, take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun that the furious anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. We don't have time to read the whole, damn, uh, the whole thing, but go down to uh, verse number nine. And those that died in the plague were, can you imagine beheaded 24,000 people and hanging their heads up? And only then, in the midst of that, there was where... Uh, I, I, I was trying to remember, was it Eliezer that, that grabbed that javelin and went and smote that, uh, that Moabitish woman and, and the man that she was with, with a javelin? And, it, and, and finally the anger of the Lord was uh, turned, turned away. Those that died in the plague was 20 and 4,000. Wow. And th this is history that they know about. I mean, the, these, these, these five books... Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy was something that they had that Moses wrote for them. All of Israel, this stuff was read to them over and over. You know that going to Moab was a zero. That's no go. And still, well, we might can make it good over there. Ooh. And, 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 and yes. Was Moab. He began the Moab right? Yes, and the other one was Ammon. Okay. Yes, so Ammon and Moab come from that. That that was one reason, but also what they did to the children of Israel, when they when they tried to go around them, he hired 
Balaam, the burro man, he hired him to come and curse them. And, and God didn't take that lightly. I mean, he, he, he got, they ended up killing a bunch of them Moabites and maybe I'd taken their country and, and killed Balaam. When they went to war, they killed Balaam too. That prophet, you know, that, that was for hire, they killed him. And so there's just a whole bunch of history that says, where would you go? N don't go to Moab, but still the mind, you know, sometimes, it, what if they'd have just stopped and prayed first? Lord, do you want us to go to Moab? We're hunkering down. Yes. No. Yes. That well, that would have been a revival right there in their own in their own instance. Instead, they walk away. And if you look at our world today, look 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 where our world is going. They're going everywhere, but to the house of God, where the bread is. Yeah, not trying to wear out a, a record, but just look at look at when you look it over, it's like whoa, we're headed down the same road, and uh, the. This is not a book about there's no hope. It's, it's a book about where people failed and how God helped them get back on target. But to understand the front of it gives you a, a little clear view of why the, when they got there, the, the blessing of the Lord could not follow them into Moab. It was not going to happen. In, any input? Yes. 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 That's the beauty of the Lord, isn't it? Yeah. Willing to save us. That's true. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's true. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. That is true. That is very true. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. The, the, the writer, I want to just, you, you, you may be interested in putting these down. Three distinct purposes are gleaned from the wonderful love story of Ruth. The, the first one is the historical purpose. to provide a bridge, this is under historical purpose, to provide a bridge from the corruptible days of the judges to the days of the kings, in particular, the days of King David. So the historical purpose was, it was kind of like a liaison between the book of Judges and getting over to the, the kings because it closes with uh, David's ancestral purpose uh, in the things of the Lord. The, the second one is the doctrinal or spiritual purpose. I thought that's so precious. The doctrinal or spiritual purpose 
to show how the sovereignty and the power of God work in the day-to-day -day lives of his people. And, and when, you, when you look at them, even though they'd gone the wrong way, the Lord didn't just say, okay, there's no hope for you. Whenever they turned back to the house of bread, guess what? They made it back. And God was with them. And God spoke into their lives. And God lifted them up. And man, that, that is the hope for all of us. And when we, we get off of the, the beaten path, you know, and, and say, hey, everything's not going like it's supposed to. I'm, I'm running back to the Lord. I mean, I'm missing something here. So the, the doctrinal and spiritual purpose is very, very precious. Also, it said under that to show how any person can be converted. I think Don said when she's talking about that, that it was a book of change. And that's what conversion is all about. That you leave everything you was before to become what Christ wants you to be. And that's, the, that's so precious. Then the, then the third thing, uh, the, the distinct purposes, under the distinct purposes are gleaned. Uh, the third thing was the Christological or Christ-centered purpose. Yes. Yes. They don't get to hear, they don't get to go to church like we do and hear the gospel. That's very true. I've heard that on several occasions. Uh, several missionaries have told me about Muslims being saved. They'd be praying because they're so devout in, in that Muslim religion. And they're crying out from their hearts and, and they, they'll go to sleep and have a dream and meet Jesus in the dream. Isn't that crazy? Uh, a, a deal like, uh, th this was a teacher, brother, uh, well, I think he is a brother, a sweet man, Mr. Palmer, uh, taught for years out here at the college. And he went on a, uh, a mission to uh, Argentina. And as they were just walking from house to house, you know, just trying to see if they could see anybody and help anybody find the Lord, he knocked on this door. And whenever, when he opened the door, this woman, man, the tears just went to pouring down her face. And he, he didn't know what he had done. If he had said something or did something, you know, that was a national era or something. And she said, no, no. She said, I dreamed last night. The Lord said, the man's coming today to tell you how to, how to get saved. It, Man, I mean, he it, was, it almost floored him. But I mean, she dreamed that, and there he was that next day. You think God's not real? But they were seeing. Woo. Woo. Isn't, isn't that precious? Yeah. You know, if you, if you convert in, from Muslim into uh, Christianity, you, you, they, they shun you. That's the first thing they do. You, you're no longer. It's like you, you've never lived. You're not part of the family any longer. And a lot of times they do you like they did that, that uh, missionary of ours that we've been supporting for quite a while to come here. What was his name? Uh, it's right on the end of my tongue. They, they beat him, you know, over there in uh, Iran. And, yeah, yeah, Brother Salor, yes. Man, I mean, that was a rough deal, but God just helped him come out of that. Cost him $10,000. His daddy got the money together to get him out of there before they killed him. And that, that's in the world today. Whoa. So uh, as I, I was looking at this over, I thought, Lord, thank you that you are such a redemptive God. Well, one, one more thing about this, the, the, the 
Christological or Christ-centered purpose, which that was the third one, is to present Boaz as a type of Christ. Isn't that precious? Because that's what the Lord does. He, uh, he said, you remember where, when you read it, they said, leave some on, leave some, what does it say? Leave some on purpose for her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that there was somebody there. Mm -hmm. And then the portrayal of Boaz yes. as a picture of Christ. In yes. Our so, so precious. Yes, Jesus come and stood in our place. Wow. Okay, so one of the first things it talks about here in just the, the, the normal lesson that we're looking at right now is that number one was the, the first crisis was that they lived in the corrupt days of the judges. And so the, I think it's like chapter 17, I don't remember the verse, but it says that, that people just did what, whatever was right in their own eyes. You, you can't get more dangerous than that because all of us need, just like you're talking about the tongue or the way you live, or I mean, all kind. the Bible just zeroes in, helps us get this, you know, get it straight where we can we live like we're supposed to. So living, living during the corrupt day. So it's easy to sin in America because nobody is saying no. I mean, when a preacher right here in Snyder, Texas, will allow a, a man, a young man, come and live with his daughter out of wedlock in his own house. I'm going to tell you what, the world I grew up in, the ranking center in the world wouldn't do that, let alone somebody that claimed to be a, a, a minister. Uh, it's still, I, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away. I'm baffled. But what we're seeing is that, well, nothing really, nothing really matters. Uh, one of the boys I've known for a long time, uh, Randy told me, he said, yeah, he just died. I think he died uh, Monday. And he said, yeah, he said he smoked pot all his life. He said he never, uh, didn't tell nobody and stuff. I mean, the guy's around a bunch, but said he just smoked pot uh, his, his whole life, every, every day. And he's gone. He's young. I mean, like 60. And that, to me, that's young. <laughs> if you hadn't got there yet, well, when you get there, yeah, that's young, yes. <laughs> that's a young man. And, uh, and he's gone. Yeah, yeah. He's still young, ain't it? <laughs> so you look, you look at that over, I didn't know that, but uh, who would have thought? I mean, you know, the world I grew up, I mean, the worst thing you could do is smoke a camel with no filter on it. <laughs> that was mean. <laughs> but to smoke dope, wow. You know, I heard them smoking on, I think it was on the radio today. They're uh, in California, they're, they're smoking on the radio. Yeah. And they're smoking on the radio. Oh. Yeah. They also said that the mother could choose if she decided in that first week the mother could choose to kill the child. Yeah, that's she basically it was, a, it was a week. It was and a week she there. would not be persecuted. Oh, you, you think we don't need a, a, a cleaning up? Whatever comes to America. Took a child. Oh. Yes, absolutely. It's the spirit of selfishness. Come on. Absolutely. No. Oh, no. I got a letter today in the mail. 
Me. To Planned Parenthood? Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, you, you can see that we're living in the days of the judges right here because nobody, and if you say anything about it, they get mad at you. I wrote a little note to the, to the president of our college, and they tell me that she's, uh, uh, yeah, president of our college, and when they're having that drag queen, is having a drag queen uh, week and given given grades if you if the boys would dress up like drag queens give them a grade for it and I man I wrote a letter and put scripture in there and everything and I mean the the, the, the before Sunday come they called Rebecca and said we're going to we're going to kill your daddy and that's when they started carrying guns in our own church I said well, tell them come on out here I said we got guns too <laughs> But I mean, they're that mad that, that they, that they it's, it's, it's been mouthed so far. But I mean, sin is mean. It's mean. And, and I, we're, we're not fighting the people. That's what I told them. I said, we're not against the homosexual if they want to get saved. But it's not right for you to take public money, county money, and, and put that on as a front with county money and say, that's okay. That's not right. This culture welcome. burn the thing to the ground. Disneyland. Well, in, in the time of the judges, do you remember what happened? That man took his wife and his servant, and they stopped at a town. And the the queers came to destroy him, and he gave them his yeah, he gave them his concubine, and and it caused a battle. And that they fought; they wouldn't give them up. They said, "If you'll just send out the ones that killed." That, that, that did this, we'll kill them and, won't, won't, and we'll save y'all. But did you know they killed nearly the whole tribe of the Benjamin? There was only 600 of those men left. They killed every one of them, men, women, boys, and girls, because they wouldn't give it up. So this spirit of sodomy is not an easy spirit to put down. Once people buy into it, like you're talking about, they, they're loco. And, and really, really what happens when you leave the house of bread and you go to Moab, you are in trouble because there, there's, no, there's no border. There's no God system. There, there's nothing there except you're just out there just living. And, and, you're taking, and, and the longer you're around sin, the more, look, I mean, look, look how it's progressed since we were kids. And, and y'all, to, to right now, who would have ever thought in any, in any country, let alone America, that you could kill a child seven days into its life 
and, and save a dog. I saw, I saw a sign the other day on the side of a truck said, we, and it showed a dog on there real thin, said, we feed 100,000 of these a month. And they're killing babies in the womb. Somebody needs to be knocked in the head. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not for being harsh on animals, but I mean, when you kill humans, and what's, what's the matter with us? Oh, you better believe it. Yes, I absolutely. No, it's, it's not understandable. It's inhumane. It's the lostness. It's the lostness of sin. And so when you see them going into, into Moab, the, I mean, being, and, and you see where we're headed as a nation, our nation is just, just like nothing matters. It is murder, absolutely, and the Lord looks at this murder. Oh, yeah. For killing a baby. Well, yeah. Yes. Yes. That's the way it ought to be. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. No. So the tragedy, the crisis is living in the corrupt days of the judges. The second crisis was the famine. Even in Bethlehem, the house of bread, there was nothing to eat hardly because they had got so deep into sin that, I mean, have you looked in our grocery stores and stuff? Yeah. Just ever, ever a little bit, you go down there and you can't, what do you find? Well, we, we can't find what we're looking for. You know why? Because the shelves are empty in lots of places. I mean, just the common stuff like flour and stuff, you go in there, it's like, Whoa, this used to be full. I mean, there was enough you could have could have fed an army. Now, if you get enough to stay a week, you'd, you got eggs and bacon. You're looking for bread. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, if you know what... People that wants to survive, they're saying if you sell milk from a cow to a person, that they can throw you in jail for it because it's not pasteurized and it's not homogenized. That's what they always ask us when they come home with us from school. You know, the kids, they say, hey, is this milk, is this milk pasteurized? I said, oh, yeah, it's, a, it's pasteurized and homogenized right out of the sack. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know for 6,000 years people have been drinking that milk and it didn't hurt them? <laughs> now we got so stupid we think it's got to go through. <laughs> Somebody got to help me. <laughs> yeah. Myself, baby, and it ain't nothing but good. Yeah. Connie was a, was a city girl, but she loved the milk, and I kept her a milk cow for years. <laughs> she loved the milk. I love that fresh milk, too. You get this cream off of there. Woo! Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Make that fresh butter, put a little salt in it. Ah! <laughs> That's, Sister Patricia, do you ever, ever drink any fresh milk? No. No milk. Oh, goat milk. Goat milk is good. Just getting it, getting it out of that sack is what gets you. <laughs> we used to have three of them, and each one of the girls would, would uh, milk the goats. You know, we had a little table they'd get up on that milk. One of them, it was it was a uh, Myron College oldest daughter. Her her and uh, Rebecca was real good friends, and so she come over. No, it was her and Jessica was real good friends. So she come over. And she said, "I ain't drinking none of that goat milk. What happened? Whatever happened?" So they put the goat milk in uh, Gandy's jar jug, and uh, <laughs> they got the cereal out that morning, poured the milk in there, and everything. <laughs> That girl, she never missed a lick. I mean, she ate her cereals and everything. And just as she nearly got through, old, old Jessica looked over at her and said, <laughs> I want you to know that girl lit up. Oh, my goodness. 
It was wild. But you know what? It didn't kill her. No, it didn't hurt her one bit. It's all in the brain. Woo. So the crises is, are out there. The famine's there. The real famine in our world is right here. This is the famine. And, and the Lord said it's coming. And, and people, people are, are giving their whole, their whole life away. Mm, tough go. The third one, and we're close with this right here, is a crisis of distrust, unbelief, and apostasy. Like, like uh, Don was saying, if they'd have stayed where they're supposed to and trusted God, guess what? God pulled everybody else through the deal. And that's, that's our hope right now, is to stay Stay in the Lord, trust God to the uttermost. And I mean, you can't stop what people's doing, but they can't make us do it. That's, that's what we got to do. Unbelief, apostasy, and uh, distrust. Oh, yeah. When I think of that, and I think of me being judged by someone else's rule. Yeah. That's scary. That is scary. scary. I can't think of a scarier thought than we as a church being judged by the world. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And you being judged by the man, the beast that man can be. Mm -hmm. And letting him be, be our judge. Wow. Mm. I would think that would be a scary thing. That is a scary thing. That is a scary thing to say to you. Yes. You are against him. Yes. So it, it, it is the powers. We're, we're fighting against the devil. That's exactly right. And, and the wickedness. I mean, it, the wickedness is deep. Woo. Wow. Okay. Do you have any special requests this evening?